Well, hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Conversations with Father Greg. In this episode, we have a homily for Sunday, October 31st, 2021. Before we get to the rest of the content for this episode, let me begin by wishing everyone a happy and safe Halloween. Now let's turn our attention to a reading from John's Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you have sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of Christ May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi there, everybody. The other day, a friend of mine and I were chatting, and somehow the conversation turned to the subject of fireworks. I commented that when I was a boy, I loved fireworks. I looked forward to any excuse to light up the night sky with color. Starting in the early spring, I would begin asking my parents, Is this a fireworks weekend? How about next weekend? Is next weekend a fireworks weekend? This question would repeat week after week, and I think that I probably drove my folks a little bit nuts. In our little subdivision, all the families on our block would organize a fireworks display. Every family on the block would compare notes and buy a small assortment of fireworks usually from a truck in a mall parking lot somewhere. At dusk, the families would gather at the end of their driveways, and each family would take turns lighting off their purchases. The bright lights and concussive bursts would snake their way up the street, illuminating the sky. And if our parents were feeling particularly fancy, they would try to orchestrate certain patterns so that the display might zigzag up the block or or maybe go up one side of the street and come back down the other. Now, this conversation with my friend about fireworks came to mind for two reasons today. First of all, I was reminded of the sense of anticipation that I always felt around fireworks. Today, we're not anticipating fireworks, we're anticipating something else. Today, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints Day, which always falls on November 1st. So, in a sense, we're celebrating it a day early this year. We're anticipating the Feast of All Saints Day. There's another connection between All Saints Day and fireworks, at least in my mind. On All Saints Day, we celebrate Christian saints and martyrs who have lived exemplary lives of faith and inspire us to do likewise. Today we consider those people whose lives of faith shine brightly, often in what may have been considered very dark times. 
Just as fireworks illuminate the night sky, the lives of these faith heroes can illuminate our lives when we experience dark times of our own. In our Gospel reading for today, we have the story of Jesus raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. Scripture tells us that Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary, shared a close friendship with Jesus. This morning, we jump into the story midstream and find Mary kneeling at Jesus' feet in distress. Weeping, she says that if Jesus had come just a few days sooner, he could have saved her brother from death. Jesus asked them to bring him to Lazarus' tomb, where we have a very moving scene. We see Jesus break down into tears as he stands beside the tomb. We're not told whether Jesus is grieving the death of Lazarus himself, or if he is moved by grief for his sisters. But probably, it's a little bit of both. Ultimately, Jesus summons Lazarus forth from the tomb in which he has laid for four days. It's an amazing display of power, showcasing that Jesus isn't simply a healer, but that he has power over life and death itself. But today, I would like us to focus not on Lazarus, but rather on a conversation that took place between Jesus and Lazarus' sisters. Mary complained that if Jesus had arrived sooner, he could have prevented her brother's death. When Jesus commanded them to roll away the stone and open the tomb, Martha anticipated the smell and she complained. Notice how Jesus responded. He paused and asked, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Today, I would like us to consider what Jesus meant by that question. What was he referring to when he spoke about revealing the glory of God? It would be easy for us to assume that the glorious thing that Jesus did was to bring Lazarus back from the dead. And don't get me wrong, that was an awesome thing to do. I'm sure that Lazarus, his sisters, and his extended family and friends all celebrated his return. But I'm not convinced that it was the whole story. What if the physical resurrection of Lazarus was simply a symptom of the glory that Jesus spoke about, and not the actual down-deep awesomeness? Lazarus experienced a profound miracle and was given a second chance at physical life. However, this miracle was only temporary. Sure, Lazarus may have lived for another 20 or 30 years, maybe even 40 years, but his physical body eventually succumbed to death once again. The physical resurrection of Lazarus was actually only a symbol of God's real glory. Lazarus' sisters had assumed that if Jesus had gotten there sooner, he would have been able to prevent their brother's death. But think about it for a moment. In each case in which Jesus offered a person some kind of physical restoration, he never permanently prevented the person's death. As human beings, our mortal nature is a fundamental part of who we are. We don't live forever. Our physical bodies were never made to last forever. What made Lazarus' resurrection such a powerful story is that it not only anticipated Jesus' resurrection, it revealed that Jesus had the power to transcend physical death. It's a reminder of something that most of us already know, that there's more to life than our physical bodies. The glory that Jesus revealed as he stood by that open tomb was that he calls all of us to come forth from the things that entomb us. If we are attentive, we can still hear his voice calling to us, offering to remove the things that bind us up and allowing us to walk in the light of God's freedom. This is the true glory of God that is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. That is the promise whose fulfillment we anticipate on All Saints Day. Let's pray. Source of all being, the beginning and the end, 
We praise you for those who have served you faithfully. Replenish our hope in your eternal kingdom so that we may have life in all its fullness, unbound by the fear of death, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 